A milestone for Obamacare may become a millstone around the necks of Democrat officeholders in the midterm elections. Dick Morris is here to assess political hits and misses. In our second hour, Howie Carr on why Massachusetts, yes, Massachusetts, might again become, become fertile ground for the GOP. And in hour three, why Russia may pay a huge price financially for its military aggression in the Ukraine. America's Forum starts right now. Here it is Monday. There you are. Here we are. Welcome to America's Forum. I'm J.D. Hayward. And I'm John Bachman. J.D., we made it back to the anchor desk here. Let's get to the headlines, though. And uh, we have some surprising news, John. A commuter train plows across a platform scaling an escalator at Chicago's O'Hare Airport. The crash injures 32 people. It could have been much worse. The derailment happened just before 3 a.m. Chicago time. Now, during peak hours, the station is packed with travelers making their way to or from Chicagoland stations to the airport. Investigators continue to review security footage. They're also interviewing the dryer and a driver and other CTA workers to pin down the cause of the accident. Last September, a CTA Blue Line train slammed into another train at a suburban Chicago station with about four dozen commuters. John? J.D., President Obama continues his talks in the Netherlands today to take part in an international nuclear weapon weapons summit. The president hopes to reestablish the U.S.'s influence abroad by personally reconnecting with leaders from Europe, Asia, and the Middle East. The main topic, though, of discussion, of course, is nuclear terrorism, but Russia and Ukraine have overshadowed the entire agenda. Europe and America are united in our support of the Ukrainian government and the Ukrainian people. Uh, we're united in imposing a cost on Russia for its actions so far. No one knows exactly yet what that cost might be. So far, the U.S. and its allies have presented a united front against Russia's takeover of Crimea, but hopes of persuading European allies to go along with stronger sanctions may hit a snag because of the strong economic ties with Russia. Meantime, Russian troops have overrun another military base in Crimea. The Ukrainian Defense Ministry tells the media Russian troops rounded up the soldiers at the Fyodosha naval base and in fact have taken control of the base. The base had been surrounded by Russian troops for some time, one of the few remaining bases that was still under control of the Ukrainian government. And, J.D., there is growing fears that Russia will not stop at Crimea. NATO's top commander is voicing concerns that the Russian army will push beyond the borders into eastern Ukraine and perhaps further south. U.S. Air Force General Philip Breedlove says that Russian troops massed on Ukraine's eastern border has a very sizable presence there. It's also very, very ready, to quote his words. And we'll have the latest, of course, in the search for Malaysia Airlines Flight 370 throughout the show. But right now we want to move on. It is the fourth birthday of the president's namesake piece of legislation. And as we mentioned earlier, President Obama in the Netherlands. But before he left, he distributed a written statement about the fourth anniversary of Obamacare. It reads in part, this is what's at stake anytime anyone out of some outdated obsession pledges to repeal or undermine the Affordable Care Act. And that's why my administration will fit, spend the fifth year of this law and beyond working to implement and improve on it. Mercy. And there it is, the president's Facebook page. And there is the appeal in the banner. Please, please sign up by March 31st. From Facebook to a familiar face joining us here in studio on the fourth anniversary of Obamacare. It's Monday with Morris. Dick Morris, Morris here. Uh, you have been around presidential campaigns and campaigns of every size, shape, variety. The ongoing campaign to sell Obamacare to the American people and yet just a written statement from it, the president? It has the president reduced to the role of an insurance salesman, literally. And uh, that's not a very <laughs> presidential thing to be. When is he going to start making right phone after, calls to it's everybody? It's right below used car <laughs> I dealer. was going to say, is he going to call up at but, dinner time to sell this health insurance? And um, I love when he has now switched his thing from implement the law to implement and improve it, uh, recognizing the defects and the Democratic rallying cries, don't repeal, 
uh, re re reform it or fix it. Uh, but obviously it's not working and obviously it's not working for the average American who is involved in it. There's a membrane between political coverage and each of our individual lives. And very rarely does politics penetrate that membrane and actually affect us individually. Vietnam era where there was the draft, it affected each of us individually. Uh, in this case, the health care law affects everybody. And it hurts most people, it affects, probably three quarters of them. And the result is that no amount of spin or propaganda or distraction can get over that. And then when you add in on, on top of that the coming rate increases that are predicted to be a doubling or a tripling of Obamacare premiums this year, uh, starting to take effect in the fall, in the summer, uh, the effect is just going to be catastrophic on this administration. Dick, if you can't expand on what J.D. talked about uh, in his question to you about this, just coming in the form of a written statement so far, obviously you understand what it means uh, when it comes to messaging, whether something's made in an interview, something's done as a uh, video release coming from the White House, as the President likes to do in his YouTube chats, but just a written statement here on the well, fourth anniversary. What it, you know, it explains how radioactive health care is when he'd rather talk about his humiliation and inaction in the Ukraine as opposed to the anniversary of his signature achievement, health care. Uh, the, uh, the, the fact is that he's running as far away from health care as he can. Now, is that why, he, you, know, you know, I know this meeting was, was planned a long time ago, but it's convenient, right, that he's out of the country yeah. as well. Well, he's out of the country so much. But if you look at the last two months, there have been probably 30 statements from the White House on everything other than health care, minimum wage, overtime, making college affordable, student loans being applied for, for everybody, food labeling nutrition, uh, the, uh, the, every aspect of the labor law in terms of unionization. Uh, there are so many specific announcements he's made, an industrial park in Chicago, another one in Detroit, uh, that have nothing to do with health care. His sole goal now is to get people to focus on something other than health care. But he can't because health care is unraveling in each of our own particular lives. And therefore, it's, it's a fool's errand. And what's going to happen eventually is he's just going to get massacred in the midterm elections. It's interesting you mentioned that, Dick, because the president himself is quoted as saying that that is going to be the likely outcome of the he midterms. He said Democrats usually get clobbered in the midterm elections. So he's putting a spin on his defeat before it's happened yet. That has to be wonderful for the senators seeking re-election. Well, is, is there, though, a, a method to the seeming madness to lower the expectations so if there are any breakthroughs and any gains, you can say, aha? Uh -huh. Yeah, but sure, that's why they're doing it. But this isn't a question of spin. He's going to face a Senate that's out of control. Uh, and he may face a Senate that is that in which a combination of Republican votes and terrified Democrats can approach 60 votes uh, and, um, and make a decent stab from time to time at override, 67. So uh, this is not just a media event. This is actually happening. Dick, so much has been made of this president going alone, uh, not really collegial with his former colleagues in the U.S. Senate. Does any of this force him to open doors to some Republican senators again to try to create some sort of charm offensive for his final two years in office? Or is he such a committed ideologue that he just cannot do that kind of interaction socially yeah. and politically? I don't know if it's ideologue or, or, the, uh, or that he's so radioactive Republicans can't touch him. But I think it's much more a function of his own predilection. I think he's a very isolated person. I think he's very private. I think he and his wife like to maintain the illusion that they're a regular family, except when she goes to China for several million dollars on a vacation alone. And I think he just doesn't want to do it. And generally, presidents in the last two years of unpopular eight-year terms hunker down and hide in the White House. And I think that's probably what he's going to end up doing. And facing a whole series of Republican efforts from both houses to repeal everything he's done. And so the, the essence of his final two years will be an extended Obama farewell tour in some way? No, a pile of toast. Really? 
All right, we will keep an eye on that. We are not going to veto or in any way strike your performance, Dick. We're so happy to have you here that we want to take advantage of your wisdom and counsel politically uh, coming up. Uh, and of course, we want you to weigh in on this as well, your chance to assess what's going to happen in the midterms and uh, on the other matters about which we speak. You can tweet us your questions at Newsmax TV, hashtag America's Forum. Visit us at Facebook.com backslash Newsmax. And of course, the old reliable email, our address, connect at NewsmaxTV.com. There's more to come with Dick Morris next on America's Forum.